Well, Basan, thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Your Excellencies. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and to explain a little bit about where we are with the Tatar Railway project. Um, I have been in Qatar just over 12 months. Uh, 12 months ago, there were six of us in a porter cabin in the desert. Next Saturday, we move into a 19-story purpose-built headquarters. So it shows you how quickly things move in the state of Qatar. So, what are we about? First and foremost, this is a journey um, with people in this room. Uh, it's a journey with the people of Qatar and the government of Qatar to support the national vision, and, and Saad did explain um, how we see that vision being supported by an integrated railway network. We're building a railway. When you build infrastructure for a railway, you're building something that's going to last 100 years plus. So you better get it right the first time, because it's very difficult to go back and change an underground system um, when, you, when you've actually built it. So we want to do this hand in hand with the people of Qatar and the industry worldwide. And I've been particularly impressed with the response that we've had from the worldwide railway industry. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the opportunities that that creates a little bit later. So the need for a railway, um, I've tried to encapsulate that in four bullet points. To provide a high standard of living for all the people that live in Qatar, supporting the vision for 2030. A railway in isolation is of no use whatsoever. It needs to be incorporated in the urban uh, design and development. And that's why planning and transportation need to be managed in parallel. Um, it has a key role to play in population distribution and the creation of new urban centres. And that is what the uh, proposals are for the greater Qatar development, uh, with new um, cities being developed in uh, Al Khor in the north, Al Waqqa in the south, and in the LaSalle development. We need a high quality integrated public transport because it is a challenge to persuade people to leave their cars at home and to use public transport in an environment. Um, such as the Middle East, where actually there is very little history of using public transport um, and everybody is very heavily wedded to their land cruiser. So we need it to be high quality in order that people will be attracted to public transport. The growth in population and GDP has led to a high level of disposable income. So the population of cars in Qatar is outstripping the increase in population of people. And that in an environment where the city centre is already particularly crowded and we do not want to build huge highways through the centre of town, um, will point you towards a, um, an integrated public transport network with park and ride facilities, a metro, and longer distance services. So we believe that the, um, an integrated public transport system will improve connectivity, reduce congestion, reduce pollution, and will reduce accident rates, as well as supporting the economy. So that's the reason that we're doing this. So what are we trying to do? Um, so I've mentioned it very briefly. Our long-term ambitions are to connect the greater area of Doha with its city centre and major business hubs and our adjacent neighbours, neighbouring countries. Um, our short-term ambitions are um, we were fortunate and we have, through a lot of hard work, secured the World Cup in 2022. Um, but because of the ambition that is shown in Qatar, um, we've also decided to bid for the Olympics in 2020. So the rail network as part of the integrated transport system has to cope with all of that and we're planning for that at the moment, a little bit more about it uh, shortly. The metro system will be four lines, and there'll be four construction phases. Um, 1A for the Olympics, 1B for FIFA 2022. Phase two will be the, um, what we need to produce a comprehensive metro system in Qatar. 
and phase three is safeguarding the routes that we'll need as the population expands. So a little bit more about that. Um, Qatar is a, relative to Saudi Arabia, a small country, but with some high density population growth. And the key areas are the red line, which goes north to south along the coast, the golden line connecting east-west, the green line, which uh, connects education city, and the blue line, which will be an orbital railway connecting all of the metro lines. And these are the first phases. Then you've got a long distance network connecting Dukan, Rasulfan, Al Shamal, and linking um, the port at Masaid, the new port, and then importantly across the causeway to Bahrain and a link to Saudi Arabia. So phase one, the Olympic option, um, is going to be 52 kilometers long. Um, most of that is going to be underground. Uh, and the center of, of the city is an underground network. And as we go into the suburbs, it rises out and becomes an elevated railway. This whole network will be 26 stations in phase one, ready for the Olympics um, potentially in 2020. Phase 1B is available for 2022, and you'll see that it extends further to the north and the south, and also further across to Education City. Phase 3, going right to the end, this is the full metro network for uh, Qatar, um, incorporating the Greater Doha area and stretching out from Al Wakra and Mesaid in, in the south to Al Khor in the north. So the integration with other projects that are going on is really important to us. Um, obviously, the airport, the Qatar Bahrain Causeway, um, Lusail City, um, Education City, Downtown West Bay. So a metro in itself is not going to be sufficient to meet all our needs. So we want to connect across what will be one of the longest causeways in the world at 40 kilometers across to Bahrain and that will go across from Al Zubara. And you can see an artist's impression in the bottom left-hand corner of the motorway and the high-speed rail network. The West Bay People Mover will be connected to the red line of the metro and will provide a distributor system for um, the West Bay area. The towers are desperately needing um, some additional relief in terms of connectivity because the, the, de the density of buildings in that area um, means that we already have a car parking problem which will get worse as we build, uh, as the, the buildings are uh, filled up. Lusail is a city which will house and employ about 220,000 people to the north of Qatar. And the red line you can see coming down the side of Lusail and the feeder network for that, the distributor system, is going to be an LRT system. And that is already uh, this, uh, I think, really innovatively, they're building the infrastructure into the development as we progress. Some of it underground, some of it at grade, some of it elevated, but all integrated into the buildings and the, the development. The time scale for dealing with this, um, and this is, this is for the World Cup, uh, I've not modified this slide for the potential for the uh, Olympics. But basically, uh, we will be letting our first contracts, and I'll go into a little bit more detail, um, during the course of this year. The civil engineering and the fit-out works, um, the civil engineering contracts first for tunneling and station uh, pits. We'll then be going into fit-out work for the M&E and the uh, ventilation and air conditioning. And then we'll be moving on to power supply and trains and controls. We will need to be testing and commissioning between 2020 and 2021, and that will be accelerated for the, for the Olympics. So you can take 18 months off, off these figures um, should we be successful in our bid. And we have to plan that we will be successful. And our track record is that we do pretty well at things like this, so Qatar will be pressing very hard for the Olympics. Um, after the World Cup, we will be continuing with our tunneling uh, and, and all of the rest of the fit-out work to create, ultimately, what I call Phase 3. So, the breaking news update 
and I just wanted to keep this relatively short because some of you have seen this presentation before but you haven't seen this slide before. The, we will be issuing an RFP for our enabling works for utility diversions and site clearances within the next week. We will be having a logistics and business opportunity conference in mid-February. This is a precursor to what Saad mentioned earlier, um, which is our consultancy report, which we expect in the summer, and there will be further opportunities uh, for businesses. If I give you, a, for instance, the railway in itself in Qatar will double the number of escalators in the state of Qatar by virtue of that one contract. So business and logistics uh, conference in mid-February. We will be meeting with shortlisted bidders, and some of the, you, this will be real breaking news for you because you don't know that you're going to get invited, but you will be invited, the shortlisted bidders will be invited to a main contracts uh, discussion and an exploration of the capabilities of those shortlisted bidders to get down to an abbreviated shortlist, and that process will happen in late February. We intend to issue the RFP for tunneling contracts early in April. And the major station box, box contract for our very large and iconic stations uh, in the city centre, West Bay Central, and Education City will be let uh, at, at about the same time. Elevated sections and at grade sections for phase 1A and phase 1B will also be let uh, shortly afterwards. And because of, the, um, because of the anticipated timescale acceleration because of the Olympics, we intend to bring forward um, expressions of interest and probably arranging for the sort of um, education um, and introduction session that we had last year in May and June, Industry Awareness Days. We will be having Industry Awareness Days for station fit out for rolling stock, systems, power supply, SCADA control systems, all of that will need to happen during this year. So there will be much more information as we go through with that. Um, and I anticipate a lot of interest. Um, we had over 600 companies register with Qatar Railways with the industry awareness event last year. We anticipate the same levels of interest for the, the fit out and the wrong stock. Um, we will be keeping that dialogue up with the industry. It, is, it, it has proved to be um, advantageous for the industry and it's proved to be ad advantageous to us. Um, I'm not going to say any more about the program because uh, we have with us Ghanem Alibrahim who is our chief um, program officer and he'll be talking in the Metro stream tomorrow about how he's going to uh, uh, accommodate this incredible acceleration of these programs. Um, and we will be available throughout the day. I'm more than happy to meet people. I'm aware of the fact that time is very pressing. Uh, so I'm going to keep quiet now, and we will take the opportunity to uh, discuss. And if, if, Bassam, if we've got any time, I'm more than happy to take questions, but I think that your time scale is somewhat uh, abbreviated. <laughs>